Xamarin.Form 3 is here with some exciting new features and improvements. My name is Kim Philpotts, and in this lightning lecture, I'd like to introduce you to one of the new Xamarin Form 3 features called the Visual State Manager. So what is the Visual State Manager, you might ask? For those of you coming from a WPF or a UWP background, you might be familiar with the concept, but at its simplest, the Visual State Manager provides a nice structured way to make changes to your user interface visuals via code or more commonly through markup. It does this by introducing the concept of visual states. And a visual state is the visual appearance of an element given its particular state. So for example, an entry field might be enabled, it might have the focus, or maybe it'll be disabled. So they are the states of the control. Within each of these states, we can specify how the control should look via one or more setters. For example, when the entry field is in a normal state without the focus, we give it a light green background. When the control has the focus, we give it a light yellow background, and if the control is disabled, we make it light blue. The way visual states are packaged up is into visual state groups. You can have one or more visual state groups defined, but every visual state within a group is mutually exclusive. For example, our entry field couldn't be enabled and disabled at the same time. Out of the box, baked into Xamarin Forms 3, we have these three states of normal, focus, and disabled defined. But as you'll see, we can also create our own states as well. Okay, so let's jump in and have a look at a simple example using these inbuilt states. I'm gonna work with a small application that you can download and play around with, so I'll give you a link to the source code at the end. The first thing we'll have a look at is the common states page. It's really just got a couple of entry fields and a switch. The is enabled property for the entry fields is controlled by the switch, so we can easily have a look at those states. If we just go ahead and run this application first of all and see what we have without any visual state manager code. Remember, we don't have any states defined, so it'll behave exactly as you'd expect. And we can go ahead and we can toggle the enabled state and it shows a gray background just like you'd expect. So now let's add in some visual state code. I'll do this directly inside the second entry element. The first thing I'll do is add in a visual state manager tag where I'll add my visual state groups. Then we'll go ahead and define a visual state group. So I'm calling this common states, but you could actually call it whatever you want. And then within my group, I define my states, normal, focused, and disabled, along with their corresponding set of values. Now, by the way, in case you're wondering, I don't really type this fast. I, I cheated and I sped up the video, so don't feel bad if you can't type that fast, because neither can I. All right, let's just pause here for a second and see what we have. I've got three states. Remember, these are the built-in ones, normal, focused, and disabled. Within each of these states, I have setters. So for normal, it'll be light green. When the entry gets focus, I'll set the background to light yellow and make the entry font size bigger. And when the entry is disabled, it'll have a light blue with a foreground text color of white. So let's go ahead, give this a run and see the results. You can see that the entry value in its normal state has a light green background as defined in my visual state, but the first entry is unaffected. When I move focus to the second entry control, it changes color to light yellow, and now I'm typing in a bigger font. And again, this is because that is what my focused visual state defines. And when I move focus back to the first entry, it returns to its normal state. If I now go and disable the entries via the switch, my entry control with the visual state manager defined turns a light blue color because it's now in the disabled visual state. And if I re-enable it, it goes back to its normal state. Now, what about if you wanna have the same visual state across multiple elements? It seems a little bit crazy to have to declare the visual states for each element, and of course you don't have to. So to solve this, we use styles to declare our visual states. We can create an implicit style at the page level that will affect all entry fields. Of course, this could also be at the application level as well as you want to, so all the normal rules of styles apply. Within our style, we defined a setter targeting the property, visual state manager dot visual state groups. Within that, we put a visual state group list element, and then we can just move that common states 
visual state group from our element to the style. And then tidy up by removing our visual state manager tag from our element. And we're good. If we run it now, we should see that all of our entry elements now use these visual states. We get nice big text on all of our focus fields and our disabled works just as it did before. So now we've looked at the built-in states, let's turn our attention to creating our own visual state groups. For this demonstration, we'll have a look at how we can use custom visual states to help provide visualization of data entry form validation. To start with, we have a registration page. It already has a visual state group for the common styles set up for entry fields, so just like we did in the last demo, but this time we're only setting the background color to light yellow when the entry has the focus. In the code behind, we're just doing simple validation of the fields in code. When the user clicks the submit button, we're checking if each of the fields is valid and displaying an appropriate message. We're also hooking up to the text change events of the entries to do the validations as well. So the actual validation is just done via some simple methods. The username needs to have a length greater than zero. The email must be a valid password string as asserted by the system.net.mail namespace. And the password just needs to have greater than six characters. Let's go ahead and run the application again. We can see we have the highlighting of the focus field. And if we enter the correct details, our validation works. If we change the fields to be invalid, our validation on the button catches we have invalid values. However, we don't give the user any visual indication of what needs fixing. So let's go back and fix that up. What we're going to do is introduce another visual state group for our entry fields. So I'll just go ahead and paste in the code. You don't need to see me type it because visual state groups tend to be a little bit verbose. Let's have a look at what the new visual state group contains. It's called validation states, not that the name really impacts anything, but of course you want to name them meaningfully. And in our case, we have two states, valid and invalid. For valid, we set the text to green and for an invalid value, we set the text color to light coral, which of course is the universal color for something that's wrong. So the interesting thing now is that we have two visual state groups underneath our entry style. And if you remember, I mentioned that visual states within a group are mutually exclusive, but we could be in a common state and a validation state at the same time. For example, we could have an entry field which has the focus, which is in one of our common states, but it has an invalid value, which is one of our validation states. So now the question is, how do we trigger the validation states? The common states are actually just handled by Xamarin Forms because it knows about normal, disabled, and focused. But for our custom states, we need to write some code to go and trigger them. If we go and have a look at that, in our code to look if the username is valid, we set a state using the name of the visual state we've defined. So the actual line of code that does the work is visual state manager dot go to state, where we provide it with the control or the element and the state which will in turn use the appropriate setters for the state that we specified. And we can do exactly the same thing for our email and our password fields. In fact, if I was clever, I might even move this into a method so I'm not repeating myself. But anyway, let's have a look at what this does when we run it. You can see that when an entry has a valid value, the text is green, and when the entry has an invalid value, it's red and it changes as I type to indicate the status. Let's take this a step further and add a bit of text showing a validation message. So let me paste in another style that targets this time a label with some validation states. We've got some setters to specify how the label will look. So a small italic font and a visual state group for validation states. When it has a state of normal, the label's invisible. When it has a state of valid, we don't want to show the label either. But if the state is invalid, we make the label visible and we set its text color to red. Then I'll go ahead and add in the validation labels. 
making sure I use the style that I've just added. And the final step is to trigger these states, which I would do in my validation code. And again, I use a visual state manager dot go to state and apply the state to each of the validation labels. And if we run it again, let's have a look at what we have. Now, as we type in the entry fields, if we have an invalid value, it will show a message. But notice we're also still showing the correct color in our entry field as well. Let's put in one more thing. How about for the password, we also give the user some hints about the password strength. So again, I'll paste in another style. This one's called password strength and it's based on the validation message. But this time we have three states. We have invalid, which will show the text in red. We have a weak password, which will show in blue and show an appropriate message in the text property. And we have strong, which is shown in green and displays essentially a congratulations message. Now what we'll do is we'll go and update our password message label to use the new password strength style. And finally, we go and update our validation code for the password to determine the state based on the length of the password and then set the state on our password message label. If we go ahead and run that now, we can see that the password is showing the appropriate password strength state message based on the length of the password. So that's pretty cool. But we can get creative with the Visual State Manager in some other scenarios as well. So another common use is to vary the layout of your pages based on the orientation or the platform or the idiom. So whether it's a tablet or a phone. Let's have a look at one more example then. This time we'll play around with modifying our layout based on the orientation of the device. Effectively, what we're gonna do is reposition and show or hide content based on the orientation of the device. Let's have a look at the final page. I've already got the states defined in here. First, we have the style for the detail section of the page. We define a visual state group for orientation states. Within that, we have visual states for portrait and for landscape. And if you have a look at the setters in there, they're just modifying the grid row and columns that are being applied. So we're gonna be moving whatever is tied to this style between different cells of the grid. We have a second style as well for the additional information label, which again has orientation states of portrait and landscape. But all we're doing here is making the label hidden in portrait, visible in landscape. And if we look down at the actual layout of the page now, the root container is a grid with two rows and two columns. Notice that the second column and the second row are set to auto, which means it'll only take up space if something is in there. We have an image of a monkey in row zero, column zero, so it'll always be displayed. And then we have a content view called details box view, which uses our style of detail box, which is tied to our visual state. Then we have some content, which is just some labels. And finally, we have a label which is tied to our style of additional info, which remember is only gonna be shown in landscape mode. Now let's have a look at how we trigger the states. In our code behind, we have an override for on size allocated. So we just have a look at if the width is greater than the height. And if it is, we assume that the state will be landscape. Otherwise, it'll be portrait. And then we use the visual state manager go to state to set the orientation state value onto our details box view and the additional text label. And that's it. So let's give it a run and see what we have. Okay, so when we're in portrait mode, we have the picture of our monkey and the details box at the bottom. So column zero, row one. Also notice that the additional text isn't displayed. If I now rotate this in a landscape mode, my visual states are set and my details box moves to the right. So column one, row zero. And the additional text is now visible as well. And of course, if I swap back, it moves back to underneath the monkey. 
You can probably see this even better if we run this on a UWP desktop version where we can resize the window to trigger the state. As I resize the window so it's longer horizontally, it goes into landscape, and as I shrink the horizontal, it triggers portrait. So that's all I really wanted to show you in this lightning lecture. Spend some time, check out the new Visual State Manager feature and all the other cool new things in Xamarin Forms 3. And if you want to download the sample code for this lightning lecture, go have a look at aka.ms slash zamvisualstate. And also for even more information, go and have a look at the amazing Xamarin documentation at docs.microsoft.com slash Xamarin. Also, if you have any questions or you want to get in contact, feel free to shoot me an email or send me a tweet. So with that, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy coding.